Hello everyone out there, my name is Sarah Brown and I teach math at Wing Luke Elementary to third, fourth, and fifth graders. I want you all to know that your teachers and everyone who works at your school miss you a lot. Things are really boring without you. And um, we're thinking about you every day. This lesson is for anyone who's interested, but we'll cover partial products multiplication, which is generally taught in fourth grade and then um, practiced in fifth grade up to three by two digits. Um, it will likely be review, and if it's not, then pay attention and you can practice at home on your own. Uh, we are gonna go through a warm up and um, a word problem, some instruction, and then a game. And all you need right now is something to write with and something to write on. And if you have your multiplication chart that you made from the last video, then please have that handy as well. Before we get started, I'd like to introduce you to your classmates. Um, very important, okay? This is uh, Mole, and Mole would really like to, you to know today that um, Mole is short for guacamole. Kind of like at Wing Luke, we have a student named, uh, we have lots of kids who use nicknames, but um, Abdi Latif, if you're out there, hello. Um, he goes by Abdi, that's his nickname. So Mole goes, uh, guacamole goes by Mole. Then we have um, Zahra. We have Neville, and we have, of course, chicken soup. Let's get going with our warm up. So, our warm up today is going to be how many ways can you make 90? So, this is an unlimited question. There are so many different ways to make 90. Today, we're focusing on um, structure, how mathematicians use structure. Almost all of math is taking apart numbers and then putting them back together. And uh, if you can take apart 90, then you can put it back together. So how can we take apart 90? Um, your challenge is to use all operations in your expression. So um, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, okay? Um, not necessarily all in the same expression, but you could certainly try. Super challenge is to um, try expressions using exponents, parentheses, and or fractions. Super, super challenge is to include a square root. You might not know what a square root is. That's okay, but here's a hint. The square root of 25 is five. Okay, I'm gonna give you one idea before you get going. Um, one way to make 90 90 plus one minus one. If you are looking at that and you're thinking that is so easy, I barely use my brain at all, challenge yourself more than that, okay? So um, make it harder. And another idea would be um, maybe 80 plus 10. Again, if that feels easy, okay? We could keep going, we could go 80 plus 10 minus eight, so I know that 10 minus eight is two, so we're at 82. We need to get back up to 90. Okay, so negative eight plus positive eight gives us zero, back to 80 plus 10. So push yourself, try to include a lot of different ways that you've learned to work with numbers um, this school year. So I'm gonna give you a moment, and your classmates are going to be doing this along with you to uh, come up with as many ways as you can to make 90. If you're watching this as a video, you can pause and take a good five minutes to do as much as you can. But I'm gonna give you just a little while if you're watching this on cable. Mole, what you have? Okay. 100, 
take away, right? Yep, because 90 is smaller than 100. Take away 12 plus 2. Let's double check. Why don't you check along with us at home or wherever you are? 100 take away 10 is 90. All right, and then minus 2 more and add that 2 back. Let's make it an equation by adding an equal sign and then the total of 90. Oh, interesting. Okay. Zahra is thinking 180 divided, okay, she's using that challenge to divide by 20. Something I'm noticing right away is that both of them end in one zero. So I'm gonna look at that as 18 tens. If a number ends in one zero, that's tens, divided by two tens. That way, I can just do 18 divided by two, and I get nine. It's not 90, what can we do? Thank you for making that mistake. It helps us all really think this through. Oh, okay. So we actually just need to do 18 tens divided by two, and then we still have 10. So nine tens is 90, fantastic. All right. What about this one? Ten to the ninth power. This might be familiar to you if you're in fifth grade. If you're in fourth grade, you can look forward to learning this next year if you haven't learned it yet. Okay, this is a power of ten. Okay, so what this means is that we're going to multiply ten by itself nine times. So that would be ten times ten times 10, times 10, and so forth. What are you thinking? I'm thinking, uh-oh, I already know that 10 times 10 is 100. And do you remember that lesson from last time? Every time we append a zero, the number gets 10 times bigger. So actually, 10 to the ninth power is one with nine zeros, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Remember our commas? One, two, three, comma, one, two, three, comma, one, two. Whoa! Thousands, millions, billions. Ten to the ninth power is one billion. Thank you so much for making that mistake because we got to look at a really big number, and that's actually a rookie mistake that's really common when you're first learning exponents is to think that this is 10 times nine, okay? So thank you for allowing us to um, have our brains grow and we learn more actually from making mistakes than we do from getting things right. Cool, all right. So if we were gonna change that, we would change that to 10 times nine, okay? Um, I, looks like I need, a little bit more space here. I'm gonna borrow this. And um, Neville, interesting. Okay, this is what Neville wrote. Three times three times five times two. Oh, he says those are all prime numbers. Cool. They don't have any factors other than one in themselves. So three times three is nine. Nine times five is 45. 45 times two, remember that that's just the same as 45 plus 45, is 90, very cool. You know what you did, Neville? You found the prime factorization of 90. I'm gonna show you a shortcut because we know that mathematicians love shortcuts. First thing I'm gonna do is put these numbers in order. I'm gonna put the smallest one first. And then do you see how we have two threes here? We just learned that we can use an exponent if we're gonna multiply a number by itself. So we can do two times three to the second power because that means three times three times five. Very cool. Oh, okay, very, okay, chicken soup took the challenge. Chicken soup would like 
to double check about this. What? Oops. Chicken soup was right, I was wrong. Okay. So the square root of 81 times 10. So the square root of 81 means what numbers can be multiplied together, okay? The same number to make 81. So it could be um, just like three times three is nine. The square root of nine is three. The square root of 81 is nine because nine times nine is 81. So then we're back to nine times 10 equals 90. So any of you watching this, um, wherever you are, older family members, um, as you are doing a little bit of math every day while you're um, not in school, you can do a warm up like this with using any number. So you could uh, choose the number 36. You could choose the number 1,902. You could choose two and a half. You could choose uh, decimals. You could choose units of measurement. You could do 98 feet. So um, that is a quick and easy warm up, and it naturally differentiates where um, students can uh, do the work at their own level, trying to decide for themselves like what feels like a challenge, what feels too easy, and what feels too hard. We're gonna get going into our word problem now. So if you were in our um, lesson last time, we were talking about what we do at Wing Luke that's called three reads. Most schools have some sort of approach to word problems um, that uh, helps us understand what the question's asking and what we need to do to solve it. So at Wing Luke, three reads means the first time you read it, you're just making a picture in your mind. You're visualizing what's happening in the story. So I'm gonna read it out loud to you. You can close your eyes or you can just um, kind of look, look off and think about what's happening. A group of volunteers prepared 35 food bags to deliver to seniors who were staying safe inside. If each bag contained three cans of chili, two cans of sweet corn, and one can of bamboo shoots, how many cans of food were distributed? What's this problem about? Yeah, it's about people delivering food to seniors. That's all we need to know. People are delivering food to people who need it. Okay, second read. This time I want you to really focus on um, what this question, or what this problem is asking. What are we trying to figure out here? Okay, so I want you to read along silently with me and I'm gonna read it out loud again. A group of volunteers prepared 35 food bags to deliver to seniors who were staying safe inside. If each bag contained three cans of chili, two cans of sweet corn, and one can of bamboo shoots, how many cans of food were distributed? What's this problem about? Oh, excuse me. What is this? What are we trying to figure out? Oh, Zahra says, we are trying to figure out um, how many cans of food were distributed? Great, so let's write our open answer statement, okay? So the question, how many cans of food were distributed? Great. Blank cans of food were distributed. Mathematicians get excited about that word distributed. It means to hand out, okay? All right, third read. This time I want you to read along so you can read it out loud with me. And your task this time is to identify the important information. What's the important information that we will need in order to solve this problem? And this time we're just gonna stop as we go, actually, and write down the important information. A group of volunteers prepared 35 food bags 
Okay, that's important, 35 food banks. Thirty-five food banks. Okay, to seniors who are staying safe inside. And I'm double checking that sentence. Um, doesn't look like there's like two boxes that both have thirty-five food banks. There's just thirty-five food banks to deliver to seniors who are staying safe inside. Okay, read the next complete sentence with me. If each bag contained three cans of chili, two cans of sweet corn, and one can of bamboo shoots. How many cans of food were distributed? Okay. So each bag, that's an important word, isn't it? Each bag, that means all the bags have the same amount. Okay, so each bag has three chili. Okay, mathematicians, again, we love shortcuts. I'm not gonna write cans of chili. I'm just gonna write three chili. Two corn, one bamboo, okay? So now I need to figure out what to do. What are we gonna do to solve this? So if they all have that many cans, I could just count up those cans, couldn't I? Okay, so three plus two is five, plus one is six. So six cans. So we've identified that there's 35 food bags and they each have six cans. So step one was to figure out how many cans in each bag. Step two, 35 copies of six. So last time we did something called the area model where we um, actually drew out grids and saw, took this pro the multiplication problem apart and um, we solved it using that model. Uh, today we're going to solve it using partial products. So if you have your multiplication chart handy, then um, you can pull that out. Or maybe you know your facts and you can uh, retrieve them from your head. Okay, so we know we're doing 35 times six. So we're gonna set it up this way, vertically. 35 times six. Then you're gonna make a big plus sign. And you might already be thinking, that's not the way my teacher does it at my school. People set this up a lot of different ways. If you have a way that you are really familiar with, then you can set it up that way. I'm gonna show you one possibility. Um, and uh, you can learn that. And if you can learn things in multiple ways, then you really know it, okay, so be open. Um, I'm going to take this into expanded form to 30 plus 5. Ooh, I almost forgot to tell you. I have a challenge for you. So um, if this feels super easy, and I promise you we're going to get into bigger numbers in just a moment, okay? You can be doing this at the same time, but I want you to change the one can of bamboo shoots to half a can, okay? You can think about that as being like a, um, half the size or something like that, okay? So you could change it to... Um, if the bamboo was half a can, what would this total be? Three plus two plus one half and go from there. Okay, it's a little bit more of a challenge. All right, back to this. So 35, this is a 30, this is a five, and then this is just six. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we are gonna always start in the ones place. So we're gonna, and we're gonna start on the bottom. So six times five. Okay, so we write it right here. Six times five, six times five. And then we need to multiply every number on the bottom by every number on the top. So we did six times five. Now we're gonna do six times 30. I like to write out all my equations first and then solve them at the end. So did I, did I take every number on the bottom, multiply by every number on the top? Six times five, six times 30. Great, let's solve it. So six times five, fives are pretty easy. Um, I'm just going, and I know, I know that I can switch and do it either direction. So five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Great, so six times five is 30. And then six times 30, I know I can do six times three. And I'm gonna double check on my multiplication chart. I'm gonna find my six, and I'm gonna count down three. 
One, two, three is 18. Double check that was three, yes. So six times three is 18. But this is six times three tens, so I know I can put a zero on the end, and it's 180. Okay, now what you're gonna do is you are going to be very careful about putting these in the right place. So I like to draw lines here. And you're going to put that underneath the 35 times six. So I'm gonna start with my zero, actually. Let me use this marker. Zero in the ones, three in the tens. Zero in the ones, eight in the tens, one in the hundreds, okay? So partial products is we took it apart and then we found the product of five, six and five and six and 30. Then we have to put them together. And I think this is a, a um, rookie mistake, like a beginner's mistake, is all the going back and forth between multiplying and adding. So think first, you wanna get your partial products, then you wanna put them together, right? Mathematicians think about structure. We're, taking, we're finding the parts of our products, then we add them together to find our whole product, the answer to a multiplication problem. Zero plus zero is zero. Three plus eight, ooh, I'm gonna think about that as eight plus three. 11 plus one, one plus one is two. So we end up with 210. Coming back over here, 210 cans of food were distributed. Okay, so um, now let's try this with bigger numbers, okay? So let's do a two by two digit problem. And I need to switch out my paper here, so just hang on one moment. set this up, sorry if you could just cut that quick. Okay. Great, thank you. Um, I'm ready. So we're going to do 43 times 39. If you'd like a challenge, you can make this into 243 times 39. You could also do 2 and 43 hundredths times 3 and 9 tenths. Those are some options for you. Okay. So we're going to make our big plus sign. We're gonna do our expanded form. This is a 40, this is a three, this is a 30, and that's a nine. So remember, we need to go every number on the bottom by every number on the top, and we're gonna start in the ones place. All right, let's do it. So nine times three, nine times 40. Then, so we're done with the nine. Okay, I even like to cross that out when I'm done. Now I can come over to the 30. Don't forget, that's a 30, not a three. Okay, and then I have 30 times three. You can even do, I can even show you this way. So we go nine times three, nine times 40, three times, 30 times three, 30 times 40, it makes a little bow shape, okay? So 30 times three, and then 30 times 40. You might be thinking, the order doesn't matter that much, does it? But it does, okay? Mathematicians love precision, right? So that means we like to be exact, we like to do things the same way every time. So I love looking at this. See how many patterns you notice. Mole's noticing that um, it goes nine, nine, 30, 30. 
right? 9, 9, 30, 30. And then we go back, uh, opposite, or excuse me, we have a pattern here, 3, then 40, right? 3, then 40, 3, then 40, 3, then 40. Okay, let's solve them. Um, you can do this with me with your multiplication chart. 9 times 3, 27. 9 times 4, 36. Put that in the tens place, 360. 3 times 3 is 9. Put that in the tens place, 90. We know about 90. That was our number of the day. Then we have, oh, 30 times 40. That feels trickier. So 3 times 4 is 12. Tens place, hundreds place. Tens place, hundreds place. I see that it's four digits. 1, 2, 3, comma. OK. So I promise you that if this is new to you or you haven't done it a lot, either using grid paper or drawing your lines. I'm embarrassed about my crooked lines, but I'm going to handle it. OK, so 27. 7 in the ones place, 2 in the tens. 360. 0, 6, 3. 6 in the tens, 3 in the hundreds, 90. I'm trying to get these kind of roughly on the same line as well. Grid paper can help with that as well. 90, and then, oh, OK, we've got 0, 0, 2, and one. Sometimes you'll notice that these numbers are different lengths, and we're used to having the largest number on top. Um, but uh, as, as long as you're paying attention to that, you should be fine. So seven plus zero plus zero plus zero is seven. Two plus six is eight plus nine. I'm going to think of that as nine plus eight. Take one from the eight to make ten. Seventeen. One plus three is four. Plus two is six. And then I have my one here. One, two, three, comma, 1,677, okay? So um, why don't you, with your uh, paper at home, I'm going to give you a couple of problems to try. You can make them um, uh, longer or shorter, as makes sense for you. So um, you could do 35 times 8. You do 35 times 28. How about, especially fifth graders, 135 times 82? Okay, here's another choice. Um, generally speaking, fourth graders um, are taught two by two digits and then up to four by one digit. So let's do a four by one. So 6,902 times. Seven. Okay, so those are some that you can do at home, and um, as long as you don't use too many zeros, because uh, you know that like six thousand times seven is a lot easier than this problem here. Um, you can really choose any numbers that you want. So good luck. Um, in the next video, we're going to compare the area model from last time, the partial products method from today and then get into the standard algorithm and see how they're all related, okay? But for now, let's play a game. Okay, um, let's learn a game called Kaboom. Um, I learned this from the third grade teachers at Wing Luke, um, and it's a game to practice your multiplication facts. That's one thing you really can do while you're out of school right now is to really learn your facts for multiplication and division. Um, fourth and fifth graders, we'd like you to know up through 12. Um, and if we know those pretty automatic, then we're saving our brain space for learning all of the new things that you will learn um, next year in middle school or in fifth grade. So um, this game is pretty simple. I'm going to show you a version with popsicle sticks, and then I'm going to show you how you can make your own at home. Okay? So. Um, uh, what I've done here is I've written all of the facts of 8, 1 through 12. So here's 1 times 8. Here's 12 times 8. And I've tried to put them out of order sometimes 
so that you might also see um, uh, like eight times seven, okay? So um, you also can do this mixed up. Some people like to learn their facts um, all with one number, or you can do everything you know so far. So you could do like, if you're learning, working on your eights, you can do everything up until eight. So you can do your one, two, three, four, five, six, sevens, and eights, however you'd like to do it. But the thing that you need to do is also put in three kabooms, okay? So three of them should say kaboom, and you don't really want kaboom, okay? Because you are trying to gather as many of these sticks as you can, and if you take the stick that says kaboom, you have to put all your sticks back in the cup, okay? Um, you could potentially play this on your own, or you could play it with a partner, or you could play it with three people. So um, you need a cup, and I'm gonna put them all with the equations, or excuse me, the expressions facing down. Okay. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and play with Neville, and we'll let Neville start. Okay, Neville got a really hard one. One times eight, okay? And as Neville's partner, I'm going to look at the multiplication chart. I'm gonna find the eight go down one, right, which is just staying in the same place, and double check that it's eight, okay? So Neville said it's eight, and I double checked. Okay, now we're gonna trade. Um, Neville gets to keep this one. Oh no, I got eight times seven. This is the one, this is the one that took me so long to learn. Okay, but I think I know it, and it's 56. Okay, so Neville's gonna check. Okay. And eight times seven, we're still in our eights. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I'm right, 56, okay? Then Neville, oh no, Neville chose kaboom. That means that Neville puts kaboom and the one that he already got back in the cup. So suddenly I'm winning, okay? This game can really go on and on. Um, have a good time with it and um, learn your facts in the meantime. Let me show you how you can make your own at home, okay? Took my favorite cup. I really like you, I really do. And then I took some cardboard out of the recycling and I started to cut strips, okay? You wanna make them the same length so that can, you can even measure them if you want some ruler practice, okay? And, and then I just wrote the um, expressions on the piece of cardboard. Put them in my cup. Six times nine, six times three, kaboom. And I can cut another strip. Try to make them a pretty similar size because if you don't, you might start remembering which ones are the kabooms and start avoiding them, and then it just gets sticky, okay? Anyway, that's kaboom. If you have the packet from Seattle Public Schools that they're giving out at the lunch distribution sites, that also has instructions for kaboom, okay? So thank you for tuning in, and thank you for being flexible in this really unexpected time. Um, today, I want you to send happy and positive thoughts to anybody who is missing someone that they can't be with right now. I know that's true for lots of us. Um, so try to be nice to your family and remember that everyone at your school is thinking about you and that we love you very much. We'll see you next time.